Hi everybody, I'm Scott and if you couldn't tell, today I'm looking at two different Keurigs. This is the Keurig B70 Platinum. It's an older model, it's since been replaced, and it's one I've had for about five years. This is the Keurig, wait, it's got a whole name. The Keurig Hot 2.0 K575 Plus. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful. Um, yeah, I'll just call it the K575 for now. The K575 is the top of the line, I think, as far as sort of home brewers go. There's commercial brewers that are better than that, bigger than that, whatever. But this is, uh, I think, top of the line as far as these go. This one was top of the line when it was new, or at least I think it was. The point is, they cost about the same. I think about 160 bucks if you get it at a good price. Maybe as much as 180, possibly more, who knows. Point is, I think, to my mind, these are very comparable units. So I don't think I'm being unfair in comparing them. Why am I comparing them? Well, because this thing just started acting a little weird. It didn't break, but we worried it would break. So we decided to get this one to replace it. I mean, this one does work. It just might crap out in the middle of the video. I hope not. But when it does work, it works fine. So it should be a good example of what this can do. This one is just a little disappointing. Obviously it works fine, it's brand new. It makes a cup of coffee, I'm happy with it as far as that goes. But it's not as well made physically, just the feel of it, and it's not as well designed, especially with the software. Now I did a review of this brewer on Twitter. I don't really have any followers on Twitter, so probably none of you saw that. <coughs> but I'll get into that later about the little niggly things I found with it that I didn't quite like and some more major things. But right now I just kind of want to test a couple of objective things. For example, preheat time, brew time, the time it takes to heat up between two cups of coffee. Because like my wife and I are having coffee in a row, I think this one's slower overall. They might heat about the same in the first place, but I think this might have a smaller reservoir it needs to reheat afterwards. I'm not sure. So we'll test that out. I also don't think this brews as hot a cup of coffee. They both have settable temperature, but I have both set to the maximum temperature. Always had this one set to the maximum of 192 degrees Fahrenheit. This one only has like low, medium, high, and very high or something like that. It doesn't say the amount, number of degrees, but making the identical cup of coffee that I usually make in this one, in this one, you know, same amount of coffee, I put the same amount of milk as usual, it doesn't taste hot. In fact, not hot at all, which is pretty disappointing. So I'm going to test the actual temperature of a brew out of both of these machines. Now, a couple of major differences between these. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. There's only one major difference between these two brewers, and that is that this can brew a carafe of coffee, and this one cannot. At least as far as I know. Not a big deal for me one way or the other, because I don't usually brew carafes of coffee. I don't have parties at my house too often. If I do, I'll just brew one cup at a time. It's fine for me. Now, if you want to brew crafts, that's good for you. This is the machine to get, I suppose. Now, one thing you'll notice right away between these two machines is that this one seems to have a much bigger water vessel than this one. It's physically much larger, but it's also a bit thinner and sort of more strangely shaped. It's got a lot of curves to it on the outside here, whereas this one's a little more straightforward. This one looks a lot bigger, it holds about half a liter more, which is a decent amount, I will say, but I never really had a problem with this running out, so this isn't gonna make a huge difference in your life if you're going from once one Keurig to the other like I did. One thing I did like about this water reservoir is that, well, its shape is very simple. It holds in the hand nicely, you take the top off, you stick it under the tap, you fill it up. No fuss, no muss, and holding it like this, you can stick it right back in the brewer easily. Might be a little awkward from this angle, but if you're, on, if you're in front of the machine, no problem at all. This one, a little bit weird. When you take it out of the machine, it comes to hand like this. It has this nice little recess for holding it, which is, it gives you a good grip on it. But it's much longer, it's much wider than the other one. So if you have a small kitchen sink or some dishes in the sink, trying to get this under the tap is a pain in the ass. Not only that, it's a weird aspect of the design. I understand why they did this. But I think most people will probably take this to the sink to fill it up. But if you want to dump water directly into it, it's got this little flap on the front so that you could pour water directly into it. But why would you use an intermediate vessel when you could just use this vessel directly at the sink? I guess because this vessel's awkwardly large and weirdly shaped, and that makes it difficult. They're kind of solving a problem that didn't exist in the first place. 
But I guess if you want to fill it from the but I guess if you want to fill it from the front for some reason, this flap is nice. Although it was rather easy just to take this off before, so I really don't know why they changed that and put why they bothered. You know, it's it's not a huge enhancement. And holding this in any other way other than this way, it's kind of awkward and kind of slips out of the hand because of the way it's curved. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. You know, you have your own preferences and sizes of hands and whatever. So uh, maybe you'll like it more. I don't know. A um, few minor differences. This one has a blue light that lights up the water reservoir. This one has an LED that you can change the color of. Not a red, green, blue, white, I think, were the options. Not a big deal, but if you didn't like this uh, from a strictly aesthetic perspective because of that light, you got options. This one, of course, being a 2.0 brewer, has a LCD touchscreen. Sounds great. I'm not sold on it. This one had a certain set of discrete buttons. I kind of like that, only because touchscreens, especially cheap touchscreens like this one's, resistive touchscreens, not the type you have on your cell phone. This is a older technology touchscreen. These can fail. They can get worn out, and even just pressing on the screen can eventually cause the screen to become damaged, especially if you hit it too hard. Having these uh, discrete buttons, I think, would increase reliability. Can't say for certain. Only own this for about a week now, so the jury's out on that. Oh, and speaking of reliability, um, you might think I have a dim view because this one started failing, but I've had this brewer for about five years. We make an average, I would say, of about three cups of coffee per day. So that's about 5,500 cups of coffee, which I think we bought this for $160. So that works out to just under three cents per cup of coffee to cover the cost of the machine itself. I think that's fair. I think I got my money's worth there. Because three cents for a cup of coffee, well, plus the uh, pack, of course, not bad at all. Uh, plus the electricity, but we don't need to get into that because these use about the same amount of electricity and the cups cost the same. So I'm just talking about the machine itself. One other relatively minor difference between these two is the drip tray. Now, I understand why they did it. But on this machine, the drip tray comes out completely, leaving nothing there. Now that's presumably so that you can fit a carafe under there, and that's quite understandable. As far as the old B70 model goes, the drip tray would come out, leaving this extra little platter thing here. And like I said, I'm not really going to brew carafes, so I'm not too concerned about the carafe thing, but I like this just because... relatively minor thing. I don't know, I just preferred this design better for that sake. Again, I know why they did it, so that's just me. One thing though that's really not cool is the build quality. Now, build quality is hard to judge because I didn't open up either of these machines. I don't know what components are inside, so I don't know. Maybe the quality of the internal components got better in this machine versus this one. That being said, this one weighs more. Uh, this one weighs 12 pounds, two ounces for the old B70. The newer model, which is physically larger, weighs eight pounds, 10 ounces. Yes, I wrote it in the back, because I'm never gonna remember that. So this is almost four pounds lighter, and that's without the craft, by the way. Without the craft itself, or without the uh, reservoir, without water in it, that's uh, just as it is. So this one's significantly less dense and less heavy in general. That either means one of two things. They either got way more efficient with the design so that they could do the same things with less components, or they bought cheaper components. Mm, I don't know which one it is. Like I said, I haven't opened it up, but I have my suspicions as to which one it is. You can kind of tell right away. When I lifted this for the first time, I was not impressed with just the cheapness of it. There's no weight to this mechanism at all, and it wobbles back and forth very easily and kind of, it just, it just feels cheap, especially this plastic right here. It just feels very flimsy, like a child's toy. This one, however, has just a more solid feel overall. Ooh, it's kind of dirty in there, sorry. Um, this was about to go in the garbage. But overall, a lot more solid. The plastic just feels thicker. It doesn't 
feel all rattly and cheap. I, and this has just a much more satisfying shunk. I don't know how to describe it, but it's where it just clicks into place. Very satisfying feel to it, like a high quality car door, you know? When you close it, it gives that nice joof. This one, it just, it just clicks like a cheap piece of, piece of plastic. Um, not terribly impressed. Anyway, let me get to the real testing here though, as far as which one's sort of faster. So, first test is going to be the preheat test. I'm going to start with the old machine. Okay, it's plugged in and the machine is going on now. And it says not ready. And we're going to wait to see how long it takes to become ready. While this is heating up, I just want to talk about one thing that I didn't like about this machine that I never liked. Small idiosyncrasy, but something that always bothered me. If you turn it on and then put a K-cup in here and close the lid, it waits until it's ready before this light will start flashing. And it lets you select the brew size and all that good stuff. However, the timeout for selecting the brew size and being allowed to hit this button is shorter than the amount of time it takes for this to heat up. In other words, this will finish heating up, but this will have cleared whatever settings you had for brew size. And the only way to reset it is to then slightly open the lid and then close it again. Just, like I said, a little annoyance, not a big deal. The uh, newer machine has far more annoyances. But now, some time has passed, it's still heating up, I can hear it. I'm gonna close this so as soon as the front light starts blinking, we'll know it's ready. That'll be a good indicator. Okay, and there it is, it's ready. So it was that amount of time. Okay, now this one does not have a physical switch on the back like the other one, so I'm gonna press the power button now. All right, it's powered on. And now we play the waiting game. Luke, I am your father. <sighs> Okay, it is done. All right, so both these guys are warmed up. The next test is to see how long it takes to both brew a cup and then to brew a second cup after it because they might have to heat up between the two cups. So that's uh, of interest to me. Also, I'm gonna set both of them to the second to largest cup size, which I believe is 10 ounces in both cases. And that's the size I usually drink and it's the size that you can fit in sort of a regular mug and still have enough room for some milk if you take it with milk, which I do. Um, oh, this one, the 575, also has the option to make a strong brew, which basically just means it flows the water more slowly through the K-cup. I really like that because I like strong coffee, so that is a step up from the old B70. So for the test, though, I'm going to use regular, not strong, because that's definitely going to be slower for a good reason on this machine than this machine. So in this test, they should theoretically be on par with each other. That brings up a good point. If these are both set to regular, to just a regular strength cup of coffee, whichever one is slower is probably going to produce the stronger cup of coffee. Because like I said, the strength is really dependent on how slowly or quickly the water flows through the K-cup. So even if on their standard setting, one flows more quickly than the other, well, the quicker one's gonna be the weaker cup. I just like this mechanism too, how it sort of like opens up and offers you a place to put the K-cup. So close that guy. And so I'm going to hit the buttons at the same time. Now. Okay. This one got a stream started faster. This one's still making noises internally. Nope, now coffee's coming out of this one. Now this one's dribbling a little more slowly now. Now you might think that's because it's old, but I assure you this is kind of it's been its uh, modus operandi since it was new. Okay, this one's definitely got a leg up. There's definitely more coffee in that cup, but this one started first, so I think this one's the winner for speed. And since this one didn't start flowing right away, the strengths might end up being the same. Oh, this one's still dribbling a little. Okay, still dribbling a little. Some drops are still spewing out. 
and this one's completely done, and the last drop has dropped. Okay, so next, okay, now as far as size goes, you probably are not gonna be able to see this, but they really have the same amount of coffee. I mean, maybe one has like, no, that's the same. I can assure you, take my word for it, the same amount of coffee in both cups, which is good. Now, to test the temperature, this non-contact thermometer, 159 degrees is the hottest, 160 degrees. 160 degrees. 165 degrees. Okay, this one's definitely hotter. Let me stick it right in there, get it right up close to the coffee. 165, yep. And 162, 160. Yeah, so very close, okay. So maybe I was wrong about my assessment with the milk, but they seem about the same. Now the weird thing is this one actually does say the temperature, this says it was set to 192 degrees. I got 165. Now it did have to warm up this cup while doing so, so that might have dropped the temperature a little bit. I didn't measure the stream coming right out of it. But both these cups were identical, so they would have cooled at just about the same rate. Um, so I think it's fair to say that they're both pretty on par with temperature. So maybe that was a little observer bias on my part before. Okay, now I'm gonna dump these two out and then I'm gonna test cups back to back after these have reheated completely. Okay, got my second cup standing by and for the sake of this test, I'm gonna use the same 2K cups over and over again. Some of you might think that's unfair, but I mean, the machines will be on par with each other. Again, both identical, both having already been used. So. I think it's a fair way to test it, and really I'm testing the reheat time, not the amount of time it takes to flow the brew out. So uh, I think we're okay here. Now both of them have been, or done reheating. You can tell by the noise. They both make a slight noise when they're heating up. And uh, it's also been a couple minutes, so we should be good. So I'm just gonna open this and then close it so it thinks I put in a new K cup. And then I'm just gonna make sure the settings are identical, 10 ounces, second to largest, which is also 10 ounces. And I'm gonna brew these. And this time I'm gonna wait till the last drop comes out and then I'm gonna swap mugs and as soon as it allows me, I'm gonna start brewing again to see uh, how fast you can get two cups of coffee out of it. Okay, they're both kind of finishing up here. Oh, a little more coming out of this one. Okay, they're both done. Yeah, okay, they're both making the noises like they're getting ready to brew another cup. And then I'm gonna trigger those. And then this one still says waiting. This one says not ready. Sorry to stick my head in here like a weirdo, but uh, ready to brew, boom. This one still says waiting, still, still heating. It's got the spinning little dial thing. Spinning little dial, spinning little dial. Oh, come on, you're killing me here, new Keurig. Oh my God, that one's gonna be done before you're done preheating. Are you serious? Oh, done. Okay, oh, it's not ready to brew though. You gotta open that and close it. 10 ounces again, gotta set that, okay. I mean, this one's pretty much done already. And even if I didn't have to faff around setting it to 10 ounces, um, yeah, this one's the clear winner as far as getting two cups of coffee out in a row. Nope, still still squirting out a little, okay. Oh, nope, a little more came out, a little more came out. I think, uh, nope, oh geez, this thing, nope, still coming. Why does this thing dribble out that much after it's done? Okay, that's done. So yeah, if you're trying to brew a couple of cups of coffee in the morning for you and your spouse, let's say, um, the B70 was way faster than the K575. So, uh, yeah, maybe get two K575s. I'm just kidding. I mean, it's not that big a difference. You know, it's not a huge deal. But it's one of those things, if you're both rushing to go to work and you really want to get your cup of coffee in you, um, you know, waiting an extra minute can be kind of, uh, kind of annoying. Not, you know, first world problems. I'm not, you know, I'm nitpicking a little here. I'll grant that. Okay, just a couple of more things I want to note before I go into the stuff I talked about on Twitter. Um, if you want to see that separately, uh, just look for this hashtag. Maybe someone will have co-opted it by now. You might be looking at porn right now. I don't know. But when I posted with that hashtag, I think I'm the only one using it. So, whatever. 
This is another really, really minor thing, like not even worth talking about, but it just kind of turns the screws on me a little bit. Turns the knife, whatever the expression is. It annoys me. This, like I said, has a color changing LED where you can select red, green, blue, or white. Weirdly, white comes out a cyan color. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it here because uh, it's pretty bright in here. Maybe if I take the carafe off. Yeah, there you go. See, that's definitely not white. That's a bluish color. It's cyan, if anything. And I assure you, this is set to white right now. So, uh, like I said, it's a nitpicky sort of issue, but if you have a white kitchen, if you're looking for something to go with a decor, well, I guess you wouldn't get a silver and black monstrosity like this, but for whatever reason, if you're particular about that sort of thing, the white LED, not white, just kind of silly. And that kind of goes with the other little tiny irritations that this software and this new machine bring, which I will now talk about in voiceover while you see some little short videos I made for Twitter. Sorry for the poor quality on those, but uh, eh, kind of too lazy to redo all that stuff. I really didn't want to make a whole issue over my new brewer. I just wanted a steady stream of coffee, but I got a bad vibe from the K575 right out of the box. But here's the thing, it still does what it says on the tin, so despite all my protestations, I don't hate the K575, and I would in fact recommend it to a point. Uh, certainly in lieu of a single serve instant coffee or even a full coffee maker that you'd need to wash out every day after use. I just recommend the old model above the newer one if it were still being made. The problem is then that the K575 is a disappointment coming from the B70. Keurig is selling their whole new line on the premise that it's all 2.0, or a newer, better version of what they had before. And I think that's a load of BS. While the new brewers have a few more features and certainly look more high-tech than the old ones, the practical design actually got worse. To my mind, it's an example of putting form too high above function. It's dressed to impress, but underneath it's a weaker, more asthmatic version of the B70. Earlier in the video, I said that the K575 feels flimsy. It's true. I mean, look how much the entire unit wobbles, and not just the top cover, even when I shake it pretty gently. The B70 was far sturdier. I think Keurig were being overly optimistic when they said to run 8 ounces or about 230 milliliters of water through the machine before brewing the first cup. I had to run about a half gallon, or almost 2 liters, through it before it was mostly not reeking of plastic. When the brewer handle is closed, it goes back to the brew selection screen, which makes sense, I suppose. But they didn't put in a back button, so the only way to get back to the menu system, for example when setting it up for the first time, is by powering it off and on. I mean, unless I'm missing something. I'm about 6 foot 4, or 800 deciliters in Europe, and I can't see the K-cup hole when I'm standing right in front of the machine. I mean, it's easy enough to get it in there by feel, but again, the old B70 was just better designed. In this tweet, when I said the microcontroller was embarrassing, what I mean is that in this day and age of smartphones, fancy ATMs, and in-car GPS entertainment systems, the k 575 display is really old, and the touchscreen isn't very responsive. Again, I preferred the plain display and discrete buttons on the B70. Also, the k 575 display is very dim and the contrast is poor. It was hard to read in my basement with all the video lighting, so I can imagine that if you have a kitchen with a lot of windows or a skylight, it could be hard to read at times. I addressed this earlier, but you don't need a timer to know that the preheat time between cups is longer. Not a big deal, just another step backwards. This is the clip I showed earlier. The old B70 had a larger hole in the middle of the drip tray, and drops from the K-cup fell right into it. On the K575, they splash all over. Might not seem like a big deal, but remember from earlier that the K575 keeps spewing little bits of coffee out even after you think it's done. Take the cup out a second too early and you've got a mess. Okay, so this isn't any worse than the B70, but the handle is easily the most fingerprint holding surface on the entire unit. If you want this thing looking neat and clean, you need to wipe it down after every use. I don't particularly care, but some people do. If you're very fastidious, I can imagine this would get annoying. I took a break from editing before recording this voiceover, so by now I've had the K575 for almost a month. i found that the coffee is acceptably hot, however I'm convinced that for the first few days the coffee was colder than the B70. I'm not crazy, well I think, but it seems like it got better, somehow. Keurig's visual design language is, shall we say, inconsistent at best. They use an eye symbol for settings, for example. 
Everywhere else in the world, I means information and a gear icon means settings. Also, sometimes the buttons are represented as embossed circles for a 3D effect. Other times they're represented as flat rectangles. On the brew screen, the ready icon looks like a button but isn't, and this is the only place where the power button is a rectangle and not a circle. It's like two different design teams worked on this software and they didn't talk to each other at all. All right, if someone or, or something says just a moment to you, what do you take that to mean? I think that it means that I should wait for them to complete their task. Keurig uses that phrase to mean that I need to close the lid. I don't even need to wait so much as a moment. It's ready as soon as I close it. I went to look at the manual online to try to find the power rating for the unit. The PDF on their site was corrupt. Now they did respond to me pretty quickly, if generically, and it looks like they fixed it, though without telling me. And as it turns out, the power rating isn't listed anywhere on Keurig's site, in the manual, or on many third-party retailers' websites. Some list it, some don't. The only place you can definitely find it is embossed on the bottom of the unit, which you can't see until after you buy it. And spoiler alert, it's rated for 1470 watts at 120 volts. Now that's a lot, by the way. You probably can't, for example, run your toaster and the Keurig at the same time unless you have a couple of circuits for your kitchen receptacles. I distinctly recall that the B70's water reservoir was dishwasher safe, but not the lid. The K575's manual says that nothing is dishwasher safe. Not that it needs washing all the time, but it's another step backwards. I remember how just a couple minutes ago I said that just a moment is Keurig code for please lower handle? Well, sometimes it does say please lower handle. It's just that at that time, the handle doesn't actually need to be lowered. It's preheating here. I in fact need to have the handle raised so I could put in a K-cup. I'll grant that maybe not everyone does this, so it could just be me. But after brewing a mug, I throw the K-cup out and leave the lid open so the uh, orifice can dry out. It gets real steamy in there, and I don't want mold or anything like that growing. However, the machine can't be turned off unless the lid is closed. The old B70 had a switch on the back right corner, which could be toggled at any time. After I was done reviewing the K575 in the basement, I brought it upstairs. Of course, since it had been unplugged, I had to reset the time. However, it seems I can't get to the settings menu until after it's done preheating. On the B70, this wasn't the case, which was far more logical. I guess that's it. I was hoping to get to a full 20, but I think 18 things that are either a step backwards or just bald-faced bad design are enough to make my point. And again, these are mostly minor annoyances. It's not really enough to make me return the K575, and as I said, it still brews a cup of coffee, which is all I want from it in the first place. I simply find it baffling that the 2.0 version can be, in many ways, considerably worse than the first version. Also, their lack of attention to detail and functionality on the outside make me doubt that the insides are much better. I just wonder how long it'll be before I do my next video, when the K575 starts shitting the bed. Five years would be fine with me. Any less than that, and it's just another step back from the B70. I guess we'll see. To see more of my videos or see me complain about things on social media, you can find me at scott.dot. That's my handle on almost all social media, so just Google that or whatever, or put it into Twitter, or circle it with Google, whatever the kids do nowadays. Oh yeah, um, subscribe or don't to my YouTube channel, also scott.dot. And you can check out my website for sometimes more information or more in-depth reviews at s.co.tt, which personally I think is the best domain name ever, you know, because I'm Scott, whatever. So thanks for watching. Uh, I have a couple more videos in the works. So in the immortal words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I can't get up. I have an erection. <laughs> <laughs>